Hi, my name's Mark Ludy, and I am a drawer. That's right, I love to draw, write and illustrate books, and I do other odds and ends kind of stuff. Like today, what I'm going to be working on is we are going to be constructing, building a robot mm -hmm. for the game Bots and Bolts. So come along and uh, let's see what we can create. So I have a general idea of where I wanted to go. And when I say general, it's a very loose general. It's uh, So here we are. This is Photoshop over here. Uh, boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to select a airbrush and I'll show you some previous robots that I've done. Here's a recent one. Here's another one that's Sullivan. Uh, here's another one. So all of these guys, they all have different characters. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new kind of character here. And uh, I was sort of thinking I wanted to have a big lug kind of character. Something that um, has just, it's sort of just a beast of a guy. All right. So let me see here. I, I sort of want to take this and... If he had little legs, one, he's in he's in motion here. What if his arm started down low? Okay, so that's that's the kind of stuff I'm I'm doing is I'm sort of drawing out. Let's see. Okay, one lesson that is important is when jumping into art. Um, a lot of times we want to do the final thing instantaneously, especially when people are watching. So. In doing this, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get a loose framework of what I want to do. And when you take the pangs to do that, uh, you're going to be more satisfied in the long run. So I got this guy. I'm going to move him more in the middle here. Okay. And I'm going to have uh, something off his back, some kind of... It could be like a jet pack. It could be something. And what if we put a little junk in his trunk over here? We we'll just sort of put another portion. Maybe bring back this leg. So I'm using Photoshop. This is uh, Adobe Photoshop. It's what I mainly live in. And this screen here, this is a Wacom tablet. The Cintiq, C-I-N-T-I-Q. Wacom is W-A-C-O-M. And uh, it's an amazing tool. It's not a, this is not a computer in of itself. It's connected to my MacBook that's right here. And uh, it's, it's just a fun tool that allows me, has 8,000 pressure sensitivity. I'm sort of thinking if I had, sort of like the body is, off, the front top half is sort of slight, like an overbite kind of feel. That's that is that's exactly what I'm wanting to do right there. Now I'm going to put sort of a hint of his arm right here. Now what you'll be able to do when watching this, if you don't want to follow through the whole process of what goes into this, is because this is a real time video. You're going to be taken right alongside me as we bring this to completion. I don't know how long it's going to be. It might be a long video. I don't know, but you can always zoom ahead and uh, see how it's transforms, uh, go to the areas that you're intrigued with, uh, and, and have at it. But uh, I'm just trying to share the process that I go through. Okay, so we have a head here. I, I'm sort of wondering if I make it more uh, <laughs> like an egg, kind of like a half egg, but I need to do some kind of eyeball on this thing. So I, I might want to have maybe his eye Maybe he's turning his head kind of thing. Um, and then we do something with uh, maybe a little breakup even of his, of his head. I'm always trying to think, how do I make it like a character, like a living personified robot, but at the same time, uh, I mean, like a, like a person, but it's a, it's a robot. So I always have that that little thing I'm trying to juggle of how do I make it fun, uh, yet at the same time, cool, and all of that. So this guy, thinking he'll have some kind of paint job on him here. 
and this will be in the back. Here's his arm. I'm wanting this to be a rusted kind of thing that has taken some abuse over the years. This, it's almost like a bolted kind of thing. So here, here we have a general idea of where we're going. And uh, in fact, let me do this so you can follow. There you go, you can see it more clearly. Uh, let me get me out of it here. There you go. There, that'll give you a, a, a different kind of view. So, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to pull back the opacity. See that? And now I'm going to bring in another layer, and I'll call this the ink layer. All right? I should pull it on just a little bit. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, and I usually start with the eyes. My brush is at nine. And I'm going to create a mechanical eyeball. There is some looseness to what I'm doing, and you'll, you'll see that. Okay, let's do an eye right here. There we go. Now I think what we'll do is, I, I am thinking with this, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, wouldn't it be kind of cool if you could see, see through, in a sense, almost like a marble, uh, the inner workings, uh, maybe like some kind of um, wires that are connected to this, uh, to the pupil. That's, that's sort of what I'm thinking, is behind that, uh, little pupils. So, here we go. Sorry, there's a button on here that you don't want to pr push because uh, that's like the eject button. So, all right. Now, do you have your pad of paper out and you're drawing with me here? Are you creating your own robot? They say the good artist copy, and the great artists steal. They look at what they like, and they make it their own. Okay, so now this little head right here, I am thinking of where it fits in, but I'm, I'm actually going to pop it up like there's some kind of mechanism underneath it that's lifting it. This is for the game Bots and Bolts. It's a trading card game that uh, is not out as of yet. The first game that we've completed uh, is called Men and Beasts and created a ton of fun characters there. And that is, um, is coming out. You can get cards even now, but the game has not been officially released as of yet. So that's something that has been in the works for quite a while now. And how I got tied up in it uh, was my good friend, Curran, who I hadn't seen in ages, actually, reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in doing this thing. And I was so intrigued with his ideas and how he approached the game. So and there. Oh. Come here, sweetie. Oh, you guys want to say hi to... Uh... Here, oh look who's here! Oh, look who's there! This, this is, this is Opal. Yeah, see hi, Opal. Yeah, she's a good girl. She's a good girl. Tilly, do you want to come in and say hi too? Okay, go out, Apple. Opal, Apple, come here, sweetie. Oh, you want to say hi too? Here, here. oh, who's, who's this? What's this? What's that over there? Oh, <laughs> they're sweethearts. All right, girls, come on. They're little sweethearts. All right, so this is what we got so far. And it's good always to go in and out as much as you can because sometimes you can get caught up in the little, uh, the little details and 
you need to always go back and forth to be able to see the hole. So that's something I would encourage you to make a, make a habit to do. It should have some kind of name uh, revolves around trunk. <laughs> some riveting. And now this leg, what do we what do we want to do here? Uh, well, we'll call it little toes. Uh, something that's on a little, there we go. I'm going to put a little thing here. I don't know what this is for, but it's important. Some sensor down here. Okay. Now I'm going to increase, I'm going to do a little shadow here. So what we have drawn so far, mind you, uh, this is the final so far. This is where we're at. Thing that is coming up. There we go. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away this layer. I'm going to bring in a layer below the ink layer, and we're going to call this color. All right. Now this whole front part of his body. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm not on the color layer here. I almost see it as something that it's going to have to be pretty... He's taking some lickings. But he's giving them. He's giving them. Alright, so now, back to color. Let's start with the eye, because it's my favorite part. We'll put a lot of different colors in it, but... Uh, Kind of drop down greenish yellow. I want to do some deeper colors here because I want to be able to show uh, its depth. Now you're wondering, what the heck is this? Um, well, you and I are both finding that out right now. So I'm giving a little, a little light coming off of it. Uh, I do want to, I'm sort of trying to go from the base of it and adding depth before I come to the surface with it. So what we're gonna do is, let's take a cord, I'm gonna do, So now, let's give them some eyes, and let's have them be, uh, let's do this right now. 
they're gonna have to pop more, aren't they? So we're gonna have to go a little lighter. Just even, even a little bit more. Now I think what's gonna help this is let's do now light on the eyes. I'm not completely content here, uh, as are you. Um, okay, I'm going to add a little depth to make that little eye pop. Coming under it. I can't always explain why I'm doing what I'm doing because some of it is trial and error. It's just sort of the gall to say, I think if I added this color here, that would help. There we go. There. It's kind of an interesting uh, alive eyeball. So now what, what I'm going to do is I am going to... I'm going to select this. So I'm using my lasso tool. Found it right here, up here, sorry. And I am going over this whole thing real quick. If you don't have the patience for following a lasso tool, uh, this is not going to be fun for you. But I'll tell you what I'm doing. So, uh, for example, okay, this is a selection. And when you have a selection, you can add color. For example, I could say, I want to add this color. Now I'm trying to draw down here, but it only will color within the selection. So what we do is, you if I just started drawing, uh, I could make a quick selection. Or I hold down the shift button, and when I hold down the shift, there's a plus sign, this is in Photoshop, and allows me to lift off. So I'm, I'm basically clicking down, and I'm adding but I'm also holding down the Option key. Now this is in Mac. Uh, PCs have their own shortcuts. But I do this a lot uh, when I say, okay, this is an area that I am wanting to color and nothing else. I could even save this selection, add to the selection, subtract from the selection, all of those kind of things. Now this is one approach. If you saw my last little thing of how I drew the face of an old man, um, I didn't do, I just painted on top of paint, if you will. And this, I actually drew out my line art and then, um, and then I put a color layer below it. So this is a different uh, approach than that for my coloring. Now why I do this is because part, partly it's faster for me to do it this way. I like the look of both. Um, so let's say I, I get all this here and I missed an error. I can press down that, add to the selection, or I can subtract from the selection. See that? So that's, uh, this is a powerful, powerful tool in Photoshop. But this is, the line art here allows me to not so much worry about when I'm painting on top of paint. I sort of just have an outline. I have a definitive picture that's a little more uh, towards the cartoony end in the sense of it's not, uh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> My screen is moving super fast. It's a small screen here that I'm working on. Okay, sorry. Just a little, there we go. Okay, uh-oh. Need to remember where I started from. Subtracting that, subtracting this. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna come right around this eyeball.
And I'll show you what it looks like when I color on the layer here in just a moment. So I have basically the, the half part of this egg selected. Uh, let's do a um, this color, I guess. Uh, we can always change it. All right, so there I just filled in everything that was in that selection. Now I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna show you some things that we can do. Uh, but right now I'm gonna try and get the general shading in. So I'm blowing up my brush and uh, let's, let's change the color just a little bit here. Um, I'm adding dark shadows below. I'm just doing a general adding light here. In other words, where would the light play off? Where would the light hit? Um, now I'm just trying to get a general idea. Now I'm going to go a little finer here. I'm not worried about it being perfect by any stretch right now. I'm just trying to get... Uh, trying to get it blocked in how I want it okay so now let's add I'm gonna add a little rust to it now actually a little red I think I'm gonna have some kind of furnace underneath this area. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, so now let's add a little light here. So I make that a little darker, it's gonna pop that out a little more. Okay. And now we're gonna change this. We're gonna actually add a little metal down here. And this is much like the old man drawing in that I'm, I'm actually adding uh, color on top of color. And since this is a pressure sensitivity, uh, depending on how hard I press down, the ink comes out. So this has 8,000 pressure sensitivity. I have eight, 16 million colors to choose from, all derived from the mixture of four, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. You mix those colors together, you can come up with 16 million different colors. That's what we got here. I'm gonna actually change the color of this panel right here. There we go. All right. And we'll add more detail in time. Right now, we're just trying to trying to get some just depth to this. Kind of like a soup. Depth of flavor. Uh, you let sometimes, it's just the marination process of just continuing to, to add to that. Uh, you'll find that it just makes it come alive. All right, so here I'm adding uh, just a little bit of just a little bit of wrinkle, if you will, to this. Light here. I want to add a little bit more rust. Oops. So 
a lot of what I do is shortcuts on my uh, on my keyboard. And you'll find the more you get into Photoshop, the shortcuts become beautiful things. Things otherwise, otherwise I have to go up into the menu and find that information, and that ain't fun. So that is what we have for a top. We'll add more detail when it's done, but right here, that's that's what we got. Okay, now I took away the selection, so now you'll see that I can come in here and. I'm going to block in this arm, sort of make it a sort of a copper or bronze-ish arm. I want it to have a metal-ish kind of look when it's all said and done. And down here, I think I'm going to be adding the same to it. So I'm just sort of blocking that in. When I say blocking, I'm just basically laying down color. Uh, so you'll be able to, whoop, pressing the button. All right, I'm going to make it a little bigger here. Once I get the edges, then I can increase my brush size. I'm not worried about this bottom portion because I'm going to be coloring that in a bit anyway. All right. And yeah, let's get this too while we're at it. Same base color. It's kind of nice to have that, that color at the base of everything. All right. So now add a little lighter where it's, uh, where it might have some light on it here, it's going to be darker. You're not going to see as much definition. So I'm putting shadow in here. This is obviously shadowed right here. Okay, now we're going to make it pop by adding a little light. See, that just brings a slight definition to it, makes it pop. Now, I'm going to actually add a little darkness here. Usually in metal, you'll see those shadows of dark and, uh, and light. Adding just a little light as though there's some life to it underneath. There's something. In fact, let's do this. Remember me saying I wanted some kind of furnace uh, action here? Oh, by the way, uh, I just posted today, uh, I had a few uh, of my thousand piece puzzle. I'll show you here. One second here. This thing, I have 40 left of this bad boy right here. This is, uh, uh, it's on sale. And uh, what I have left is what I have left. I have the new puzzle that is still, uh, it's on its way. I'm trying to order some more, the Seco one. So that's uh, it's a fun one. So if you get online, certainly um, certainly get those if you can. All right, sorry, let me get this thing in there. All right, so now let's add a little light here. See, I'm really putting down the light there. Okay. So there, 
that'll that'll gain definition here very more here in a bit. Hopefully you can sort of feel the um, you can feel the the metal from it. All right, so now let's uh, let's get his uh, his trunk. <laughs> let's change the blue to a little darker, a little two tone kind of action. I need to go in so you're not focused on my shirt, but you can at least see this. Um, all right. If you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, uh, certainly subscribe, and uh, that'll encourage me to to make more of these and. Uh, Hopefully you can see. I'm, I'm going to be working uh, pretty soon. I think this week I'm going to be doing uh, some more video real time uh, for my next book, Tig Tig. So that's my plan is to share that process. So what I'm doing is I'm mainly getting the edges. Why? So I can increase my brush size without... I don't, I don't want to go over the edge, so. All right, so there, there's our, our rear. I'm gonna select this where I'm actually, um, what is that thing called? That is lock transparent pixels is what they call it. It's right here. And uh, what that allows me to do, much like the screen, is, is if I'm drawing out here, see, I can't draw anything. It only is, um, it's locking the pixels that I put down. So I can, much like the, the lasso tool of selecting um, only what I want selected, only what I want um, colored or dealt with. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to this. really putting down some rust. And I'm going to also put in some some metal, uh, sort of unpainted metal here. I don't want it to be just that this is that. I'm going to add a little more darkness here. All right, there we go. I'm going to do the same thing actually up here. Uh, I'm going to have whole giant portions where it's like the, the paint has come off. Now this, we're gonna actually add, put down the metal. I need to take off that because I locked the pixels. I no longer want it locked. The secret sauce always is have fun with it. Enjoy the process. No doubt about it, uh, there's work to this. But it's the kind of thing that it's, it becomes fun. Your work, when you put your best into something, work becomes something pretty magnificent. And is a gift, I think, to life. A lot of people treat work as uh, something that when you say it, you, know, you wash out your mouth with soap kind of thing. But to me, work is a gift, uh, not only for provision sake and being able for commerce sake between one another, but there is something uh, about your own soul when you give everything in a day, uh, the better you sleep and you 
feel proud of what you've done and what you're doing. So that's something that uh, it's best to be able to just encourage one another in that because and it's not to say that work doesn't have its challenges. I'm not limiting that. I'm not saying that. And it's not that work is always just fun. Uh, they call this artwork for a reason because, man, yeah, it's, it's work all right. All right, so now, see how that metal down there came alive? All right, so now we have this. Now we're going to pull this thing. Um, let's do it sort of a, let's pull it down from this right here. Same color? No, he needs to have some kind of, let's give him, let's do this purple. This will sort of reflect in his eyes here. There's some purple up there that I put down very subtly. And I may hate this. I may look at this and go, I don't like it. And that's the risk we take, isn't it? I can always change it. Okay, now I'm going to use the lasso. Why? Because it will take me a lot less time to do this real quick. Fill it in with a brush. So that's our block in right there. I need to do another block in over here. My wife hates this lasso tool. I don't know, it bothers her that this thing is sort of alive. I don't, I don't know. I don't quite understand it, but she doesn't like it. Anytime she's I was doing a project with her and I'll pull out the lasso tool and she's like, can't you do something else? Can't you use something else? She doesn't like that one. All right. All right. So there is that. Now we're going to bring it to life. Oops. Hold on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that, that. Have it selected. I use the magic wand tool just so I could quickly block in and not affect anything else. Put a little light behind. Okay, let's go below. So this is the general. And then what we're gonna do is add uh, a little more light here. Isn't that cool how that comes along? Add a hint of that, a hint of the blue, hint of this on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to continue to add my rust. going to add little hints of where we have major this is just trying to show the wear and tear Basically, the paint has long been eroded, and all you're seeing now is the rust. Maybe even some up here. There we go. It's kind of cool, isn't it?
I use the eyedropper, I'll, I'll do control, uh, I'm sorry, option, and that's an eyedropper which allows me to select colors uh, from other places, like that's right here. Okay, that's a red. And uh, so I'll use, I'll use that often to be able to find the colors that work within, uh, within a picture. So I'm not always just guessing uh, what colors I've used. I can sort of go to that and then do a variation off of it. So that, those are his, uh, oh, yeah. Okay, now up here, let's get to this because this is bothering you. I, I know it's bothering you, so let's, uh, let's deal with it. Let's do a uh, sort of a greenish, oops, I had that one selected. So I need to deselect, come in here, and I can come in here. So far, he's coming along. <laughs> All right. Now down here, I actually want to add just a... Uh, those sharp little lines just sort of add a little more... Now you can sort of see. these legs. Using lasso tool again. If you're still with me and you've been watching this whole thing, golly. Hey, thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you with me. So now we've selected this, and I am going to do just a darker blue. So it's like a triple tone. And, or should I do this? What looks better? Or should I bring this guy, that color? Let's do that. Actually, I'm going to make it even a little... A little darker, like that. A little light here. It's on that far side. All right. So now I'm going to have some hints of this up here purple, even the bronzes, uh, this blue, just the hint of these different colors that are playing off. And then I'm going to come in here and just hint at, I'm going to do the same kind of thing and then I'm going to create some rust coming off the base. As though this is, he's been sludging around for years in, uh, in the wet ground. All right, so that's very subtle. I'm not going to put too much detail in this because that's uh, it's a tertiary point. I might add uh, a little color. Go 
green button here and a blue button. And I think I'm going to even color this something else. There we go. All right, so now, let's come in here, I'm gonna select this. See, I come up here over my drawing here. Watch this, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna hold down Command and Option, click on the color layer, and it will deselect everything that was, on, pixels that were on that. So this is pixels that have not, I, I could do that because I knew that this was a sharp laydown right here. Now, and just to show you, so we have the color, uh, but I have this ink layer, right? So if I take away the color, we're back to the ink. If I take away the ink, this is all that I've colored so far. So there's the ink. All right. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pull upon this. Uh, I'm gonna make it sort of a metal. Same bronzish or uh, copper feel. And I'm gonna do, uh, let's do red. And even a hint of it up here. So it's like, and I'm gonna do it a little light so it's like it's on. It's like, all right, just a little subtle thing right there. Like that. Sorry, see this little thing, clean that up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same bronzish right here. Just filling it in there, I'll probably I'm just gonna fill this in. I'm gonna make it a lot darker. I'm gonna take, all right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this color. Sorry, there we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lock these pixels. definition to those toes. And since this is way out of underneath here, I'm gonna have that there. There we go. It's just real simple, subtle, but it makes that come to life. All right, so now there's that. Uh, one thing I never finished was over here. Whoops, let me get back to here. Unlock. A little more shadow, I think. All right, so now this up here, this, um, this ink, let me just, let me just do this. I have a new layer. I'm gonna go to nine. cuts across here. I'm going to go back to that layer. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to color it. So I'm going to basically, I'm going to block this in real quick. And I'm blocking it in because indiscriminately Just to get this thing, okay, let me take that away. Okay, so we have this selected. Uh, let's keep that be a reflection here of the two-tone. So in other words, that, that portion. Uh, let's do this. I'm just gonna give a hint of this that's gonna play off of It's 
going to play off of this down here. Put a shadow on it. Now, this blue, we're going to make that just slightly darker on the side here. And then this top, we're going to come in here. Going to be lighter obviously than what's on the trunk area. This is going to be pretty beat up. I don't know why or how he uses his little noggin up here, but he, he clearly does. Clearly does. Let's add again the rust. He got rust up here. I have no idea, but he uh, did. See that sharp line right there? Make that pop a little bit better. All right. Okay, I'm going to do some color here. He's coming along good. I like him. All right, so now we're going to do deselect this. Let's uh, bring in this tube in the back. What it's carrying, no one knows, but it's carrying something. Very subtle. Um, and then here, Let's let's use this same metal. And that metal, that doesn't rust. Uh, and then we'll do um, This is the just the hint of this blaster thing in the back. All right, now, uh, I'm hesitant to give it a name right now, but there we go. Uh, he, he came out, came out fun. He's a, he's a great little guy. So uh, thank you for taking the time to draw this robot with me, and I wish you the best with your own robots. Till next time, keep drawing and uh, keep that smile on. Bye-bye.